who built the Balevi Mausoleum. There are many, as yet, unexplained ruins which can be found within modern-day Turkey. The temples of Baalbek, the Patera pipelines, among many others, yet the Balevi Mausoleum, like the other most astonishing ancient structures to be found here upon our Earth, are quietly overlooked. It is a monumental ancient structure, located near Saichuk in the Aegean province of Izmir. It is the second largest ancient mausoleum in Anatolia, which, predictably, academia contends as a tomb, dated from the Hellenistic era around the 3rd century BC. However, like many other of the wondrous ancient structures to be found within antiquity, it contains astonishing, precise, as yet unexplained architecture, indicative of a lost knowledge, thus lost civilization. The Balevi Mausoleum has seemingly survived the eons, still possessing an array of compelling features, which fly in the face of current academic explanation. How did an ancient civilization, even if, as academia claims, was placed a mere 2,000 years ago, accomplish such precision within the stonework? Or indeed, accomplish such precision in the placement of such enormous ancient stones? It is known as a tomb, because like many of the other structures that were clearly of an astonishing nature at earlier times within history, were undoubtedly chosen by leading individuals as their place of burial. With the ruler of the Seleucid dynasty, Antiochus II Theos, his nickname, meaning God, was given to him by the residents of Miletus. Antiochus II died in 246 BC. This body, and indeed his rather modern legacy, has allowed academia to claim a date to the construction. However, the advanced precision techniques involved in its original build are, fortunately, still clear for all to see. Indeed, the Balevi Mausoleum could have once been the burial site of an important person. Yet we feel that this original individual dates from a time far before anything academia would ever permit the admittance of. The chamber, or sarcophagus of the mausoleum, precisely carved from solid rock, had a square plan with a length of 29 meters and a height of 10 meters. From the outside, the rock obscuring the mausoleum was covered with marble slabs. The marble was traced to a quarry in the vicinity of Ephesus, Yet, to complete the decorations of the mausoleum, up to 2,500 cubic meters of marble had to have once been excavated. There was also once a second level, surrounded by 28 columns, although over the eons, this has virtually turned to dust. When completed, it would have formed a steep pyramid with a statue crowning its top. Who built the Balevi Mausoleum? Was it once an elaborate ancient tomb? If so, who was buried there? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Over a hundred years ago, a curious discovery was made in a town now named after this Upart, Rockwell within Texas. An ancient wall was unearthed, and although it was clearly of an artificial nature, its possible age predictably made a number of people in the academic world deny its artificial origins in favor of a far less likely scenario involving natural formation. Although magnetic exploration suggested that the rock wall had been where it lay for over 100,000 years, its origins have been heavily debated ever since its initial discovery. In 1852, farmers in Texas were digging a well when they discovered the wall. Conservative estimates have placed its creation some 100,000 years ago. Yet now, many believe it to actually be an antediluvian relic, left by a now lost civilization some 200 to 400,000 years ago. Dr. John Geisman of the University of Texas, Dallas, tested the rocks as part of a History Channel documentary, giving credence to the denial of its artificial origins, suggesting they formed where they were, claiming that they were all magnetized in the same way. This tremendous age has led many to believe in modern paradigm, 
to deny a man-made origin, as this does to cooperate with the Bering Strait theory and currently upheld timelines in regards to evolution. However, there are others in similar fields who have found curious characteristics of the wall which do indeed suggest artificial origins. Geologist James Shelton, for example, and Harvard's architect John Lindsay have focused on its unique design features, including architectural elements, archways, lintel portals, and square doorway and window openings, which all suggest not only artificial creation, but functionality for humans, which nature would simply not create. The depth or past height of the wall is also an impressive legacy. The family of T.U. Wade, who moved to the area and initially made the discovery, dug to a depth of 40 feet to try and find the bottom of the wall. This excavation, however, was abandoned without finding the bottom. Years later, in 1949, Mr. Sanders of Fort Worth took up the baton and continued excavational exploration of the wall finding a number of megalithic stones at considerable depth and weighing several tons. After bringing them to the surface, mysterious pictographs were found upon them, further supporting the thesis of artificial origin. In addition, curious metal rings of modern composition were found embedded in rocks, suggesting the presence of lost technology. It would appear that the wall is indeed an antediluvian relic, one possibly submerged and subsequently buried in ancient sediment during the Great Flood. Modern studies have found that the wall is in fact six stories tall and 20 miles in length, with a number of individuals now attributing the wall to a lost civilization of giants due to its inexplicable nature. Quote, it is good when examples like rock wall appear that test our abilities and cause us to question basic Newtonian mechanistic assumptions that have not been modified for over 150 years. Physics had to abandon this approach at the turn of the century, opting instead for relativity and quantum mechanics in order to further their understanding of matter and the universe," said James Shelton, geologist from New Orleans. It is a relic which we find highly compelling. Here at Mystery History, we cover the unexplained areas of antiquity, either ignored, avoided, dismissed, or simply given an incomplete or often illogical historical lifeline of existence by mainstream academia, particularly those which we have covered of significant size quarried from many miles away, now often immovable, and once transported, and either erected or placed atop one another seemingly effortlessly. We were, in a past series of investigations, looking into an interesting quarry within the Bazda cave system on the edge of Turkey, a place with particularly good granite and a proven source of stone for numerous megalithic sites many miles around. Later, proven by us via the preserved linkages in tool marks to have been used by more than one group, as if they had coalesced at this particular site. Yet, as mentioned, we have long argued that not just one advanced civilization capable of moving and cutting these incredibly monumental megalithic stones have been and gone. And we feel we have and continue to provide sufficient proof of these claims. The Colossi of Memnon, said to have once sang at sunrise, are both made of stones thousands of tons in weight, yet are eroding to dust along with countless others, yet clearly once precisely cut, just like all the other stone ruins we cover worldwide. Yet sites like Petra and the polygonal casing stones found in some most curious of places such as the pyramids of Egypt preserving stones in a similar condition to the Colossi. Certain stone monuments of gigantic size, found and stored in near-perfect condition, are found in these same areas, as if somehow spared catastrophe. Does this prove a sudden great flood? They regardless, we claim, prove several cycles of activity at stone-cutting creation. 
Were some monuments submerged and therefore preserved under the sediments, like those secretly removed from the pyramids and sphinx during initial investigations? Were they attacked by a geological event? The perfect preservation of some of these statues must eliminate sandware as a possibility. The pursuit to the answers to these questions become closer, and we feel highly compelling. We have in the past covered countless incredible and compelling ruins which can be found within Japan, indeed all over the world, upon which we continue to find connecting features which not only suggest there was once a global, ancient, highly advanced civilization, but the chance that these architectural techniques came about at the same time in history, the world over, by coincidence, is so slim that many said features, we feel, can instead only be seen as corroborating evidence of their past existence. Metal clamping techniques, enormous ancient megaliths, false doors, and the as-yet-to-be-fully-understood polygonal masonry techniques have now been discovered the world over, and Japan is of no exception. Along with the polygonal masonry found upon the foundations of many temple sites, there is also the ancient fortresses of Okinawa, which also display the same uncanny ability as other sites globally, constructed of seemingly random-shaped stones perfectly placed atop one another. Katsurin Castle, Zakimi Castle, among many other Gusuku castles or ancient fortresses found upon the Ryuku Islands within Japan, all contain this same ancient masonry technique, exhibiting this now lost knowledge and thus lost civilization's know-how. Although many of the sites are claimed as restorations, any explanation as to how this ancient masonry technique was replicated within modern history remains unexplained. We must then presume that the ancient sites which exhibit this lost technique have remained intact for untold millennia, and have subsequently been misdated as constructed within known New World antiquities. Found upon such ancient sites, located within Peru, Egypt, Greece, Turkey, Lebanon, even as far as the notoriously remote Easter Island, these sites all exhibiting the same lost masonry technique. How can we continue to take these discoveries for granted, dismissed by academics, simply due to modern paradigm, absent any logical argument to explain or indeed disregard this proof of a now lost yet once global super civilization having once been responsible? They must continue to rely on the Bering Strait theory of human migration and ignore any site which is indicative of not only earlier construction, but matching characteristics with other sites the world over, which according to said theory, simply could not have been visited by ancient civilizations, long argued as a feat which ancients were incapable of. The evidence which contradicts these claims, however, can be found still in existence upon these ancient sites. How old are the ancient fortresses of Ryuku Islands, or indeed the other polygonal sites throughout Japan and the rest of the world? Who were responsible for these incredible sites? We feel simply dismissing the evidence which shows they were the work of the same civilization is not only illogical, but is a great example of the ignorance of mainstream-funded institutes in regard to a possible lost chapter in human history. It is a journey of discovery which we find highly compelling. Rued Island holds an astonishing ancient secret. Located within the Mediterranean, it is the only inhabited island within Syria and we believe was once an awe-inspiring fortress. Having once been protected on all sides, although very little of the wall remains, what is still in existence demonstrates an incredible past civilization's prowess. Like with so many other ancient sites around the world, it was constructed using enormous megalithic blocks, once somehow masterfully placed atop one another. It is unknown whether this wall was created from fear of the seas or possible invaders, but this gigantic wall once enclosed the island completely. 
known to the Greeks as Arados. It was renamed Ruad or Aruad by the Templars during the Crusades. How did this ancient civilization complete such structures? There have been numerous individuals of late attempting to explain away many of these enormous megalithic walls and buildings, such as the temples within Baalbek, as mere Roman architecture. However, just like the academics they parrot, they conveniently have no logical idea as to how this was done. Relying solely on modern drawings of these events rather than any form of demonstration. As we have mentioned on many occasions, it would be a logical strategy to not only adopt such awe-inspiring works of architecture as their own, but also to steal techniques these civilizations would have been capable of and claim them as their invention, such as Roman roads, Roman columns, etc. There are many buildings on our Earth that are, we agree, undoubtedly 2,000 years old. Not only are their constructions documented at length, but their condition also reflects this age. However, with ruins such as the Baalbek temples, and indeed the Wall of Ruad, their condition, along with the inexplicable nature of their construction, is not only indicative of lost knowledge, but subsequently evade current explanation. This reality persists no matter how hard some try to explain them away, as more modern achievements. Yangshan Quarry, Gornea Shoria, the Pregnant Woman, the Colossi of Menman, the list goes on. All these ancient builds incorporate blocks well into the thousands of tons, with countless more lost to history. How these structures were built is a mystery. Yet, if they were indeed completed by our own more modern ancestors, why is this knowledge lost to the eons? Why did these civilizations not continue these miraculous feats of engineering? Why were these supposed capable civilizations not building impenetrable fortresses to protect their flourishing civilizations from possible invaders using these same techniques? We will continue to argue, and we feel, with good reason, that academia, along with many other suspicious individuals, are selling you a fallacy, not only to appear all-knowing, but also to conceal that which they do not understand. Who built the Wall of Ruad, or indeed the many other sites we so often cover? The history of the Earth is yet to be fully unraveled. It is a tale some find highly challenging.